Hey, good top of the morning to you whosoever's. Today is part 13. Huh? Missing bull? Missing boy. Okay. Okay. See you in a minute, Papa. Good top of the morning to you. Check out this. My dad fixed my hat. Una tejana. Una tejana es un sombrero. So I'm gonna do my. I'm gonna do the teaching with my with my sombrero. Um, today's uh, part. Part. My dad. Oh, my dad said, "Watch Missing Boy. It's a it's a good movie on on Netflix." Okay, so this is part thirteen. As we get into the end times, I hope you uh, the last the last roundup. Uh, we, we, that's what we're trying to do: save people from. Um, they don't have to go into the tribulation if they don't want to. They could be born again and saved. Uh, because prophetically, uh, I believe the United States and the, basically the world economies are going to collapse. Uh, Russia, Iran, and Turkey will join an alliance to say, let's take out of the Jews. They've been causing too much trouble. And we know, according to the Bible, that the, the Russians will lose. Ezekiel prophetically addresses the Russian ruler. Command him to be prepared. Yes, prepare yourself and all your companies that you are assembled about you and you'll be a guard and a commander for them. Ezekiel 38, 7. In other words, the Russian ruler is to equip his confederates with arms and assume command. Any doubt... The interpretations of the chapter may understand and be unnerved by the re realization that almost all the countries cited as part of the Russian alliance are being armed today and back then too uh, by the Russians. The Bible says this, We have seen the Russian will arm and equip a vast confederacy. This powerful group of allies will lead an attack on restored Israel. Remember, Israel was never hasn't been restored uh, until uh, 1948. Okay. Um, however, Russia and her confederates will be destroyed completely by an act that Israel will recognize as a being from God. This stunning deliverance will bring many in Israel to believe in their true Messiah. From all this, we learn that the dominant leader in Russia, called Gog, the description of the chief prince of Rosh. Um, or Tubal and Mishak, or the other word name, is going to arise and lead Russia into a vast northern eastern confederation of nations, including Iran, Ethiopia, other African nations. About here he says Germany, Armenia, possibly the Turks, conceivably some Orientals, or whoever else can be included in the statement. And many peoples are with thee. This group of evil nations headed by Russia will make up a ma massive northern eastern confederation that will advance against Israel uh, in the last days. So if you see this happen, um, well, like basically if you see uh, economies collapse, the rise of the beast system, the one world government, uh, the war with Russia, and they lose, the um, Bible here says it's the last days. What's that? What do you mean, the last days? Well, the last days of uh, of the church age, uh, the coming beast system, the antichrist, the six 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 mark in your right hand or in your forehead, uh, allegiance to the Luciferian cult. Right with the Lucifers, right with the the, the Luciferians. Come on, get on the. Uh, I I don't like where you're going. You're going to hell. I don't want to go there. I've been born again, so I don't have to worry about that. So my job is to be a witness. And again, the witness just basically tells uh, the people, you know, no matter how dumb they sound, and if it happens, you know, you'll be like, hey, this guy was trying to help people. Um, again, the Bible says that Russia will have opponents. Uh, we know that I, King of the South, I believe, is going to be Saudi Arabia, will protest against the UN. Uh, the Young Lions, um, before examining their invasion tactics, we should glimpse in the identity of the opponents of Russia and her northern eastern confederacy. They are described in Ezekiel 38, 13 as Sheba and Dedan, the merchants of Tarshish, and with all the young lions. Of all the nations mentioned in the chapter, the descendants of Sheba and Dedan are most difficult to trace, primarily because the mixing of the races that existed for centuries in the Middle East. 
Another factor that makes it difficult is the two sets of sons, Sheba and Dedan. In Genesis chapter 10, verse 7, we note that one were born to Ramah, the son of Cush. Another set of born to Abraham's son, Joke, jo, jo, Jokshan, whose mother was Ketra, Genesis 25, 3, whom he married after the death of Sarah. Which of these tribe groups Ezekiel had in mind is not clear. It is quite so difficult to establish the identity of Tarshish, which is referred many times in Scripture to the seafaring nation or the nation of ships. Most Bible scholars had identified England as the nation of Tarshish because of her long-standing interest in sea power. The fact that her power on the ocean has declined since World War II so that she is fifth-rate power today is not comparable to, with this prophecy. The young lion seemed to belong to Tarshish and could be the only reference to the United States, Canada, and Australia to be found in Scripture. The Bible frequently uses animals symbolically to depict governments. For example, Daniel chapter 7 portrays Babylon as a lion, Medio Persian as a bear, Greece as a leopard. Here is the reference to the young lions, it would indicate young nations that were the original cubs of Tarshish of England. Therefore, we may reasonably conclude that the Western democracies, which primarily stem from England, are representative in verse 13. That is, the position of the prominence has passed from Tarshish to one of the young lions would negate this possibility. In fact, we see here the predicted diplomatic actions seem to be the style used by Western democracies. The target, Israel. Of all the participants in this global drama, the easiest to identify is intended victim, Israel. The vision of the Valley of Dry Bones in Ezekiel 37, representing the picture of the regathering of Israel into Palestine. It is the prophecy immediately preceding this one, which shows Israel as the target of Russia and her northern confederacy. Verse 8 makes the identification very clear. After many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many peoples against the mountains of Israel, which have been always a waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell there safely, all of them. Another identifying expression is found in verse 16, And thou art come up against my people of Israel, like a cloud to cover the land, Ezekiel 39.4. There can be no doubt that the little nation of Israel will be a target of a northern confederacy in the last days. Fifteen or twenty years ago, skeptics and doubters ridiculed the Bible for making such a suggestion. Today, they read it in the daily newspaper most of the time on the front pages. Is current crisis the end? At the time of the writing of the turmoil in the Middle East, makes uh, headlines. Ezekiel 38-39, Russia has moved into the Mediterranean to challenge the authority of the U.S. Navy. We know Russia has entered Sur uh, Syria and has many bases now in Syria. So it's moving its troops. She has supplied arms to the Arabs, to, to Iran, to Syria, um, to China, and has spent millions to curry their favor. All of these Machine, machine nations indicate vigorous opposition to the presence of Israel and Palestine. There can be no question that some similarities exist today. According to prophecy, uh, despite the similarities between the current events, Ezekiel 38 and 39, the activities today, uh, again, again. So we know, and this is from 1972. So this is notes that's... Uh, there's some reasons why he believes that it, we're not uh, heading into the end days, but this is 1972. Um, despite the similarities, Russia doesn't have a dominant leader. Today they do. They have Putin, who's become world president forever until he dies. So it goes into uh, concerning Ezekiel's war, uh, concerning the Russian invasion, uh, concerning the open combat, concerning, again, what God... Uh, it says the prophecy of Russia coming invasion of Israel is quite specific. In fact, the prophet gives what sounds like a description of a massive airborne invasion. Note the words, thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud over the land. 
If you've ever been in a Fort Bragg during paratroop maneuvers, you will find in verse 9 is very apt. Certainly it come like a storm, like a cloud to cover the land. Again, we are not being dogmatic, for the next text does not deem an airborne invasion, but we point out that it is possible. The use of cavalry is almost the thing in the past in warfare, except with Russia. The Crossacks will boast of having the finest horse flesh in the world. However, writing 2,500 years ago, Ezekiel used the term of his people, horses, swords, armor, bucklers, and shields. Could be symbolic terms to implement of warfare. Um, it could represent tanks, M16s, machine guns, rockets, bazookas. The thing to keep in mind is that Russia, the dominant country in this northern, northern eastern confederacy of nations and the supplier of weapons of future invaders of Israel, is today the leading manufacturer of weaponry uh, to the communist world. Again, uh, we might well also understand that Russia wants to go against Israel. Certainly, she does not need Israel's land suffice, for Russia is the largest country in the world. What would make Russia single out a little country to have some two to three million people? We have already seen that God put hooks in Russia's jaws and to turn her around so that she thinks evil thoughts toward Israel. The evil thoughts are clearly defined in verse 12 and 13 as greed. That is, Russia will go up there to take a spoil and to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods and take great spoil. The answer is very clear. Israel is destined to become a very rich nation. We have all witnessed the fact that the wealthy Jews from all over the world, symbolically toward, sympathetic towards Israel, have invested millions of capital in that country. She is without doubt the economic marvel of the world. Well-sustained reports indicate that the extensive engineering study of mineral and resources in the Dead Sea estimated to be worth more than $10 trillion. Due to an inflation, they would have six, eight million dollars today. In addition, she is surrounded by oil rich countries. Who knows what success will Israel will have? We know Israel today has a, a vast uh, supplies of natural gas and oil. So we know that according to the Bible, that as the end times gain speed, uh, we're going to see a lot more. Um, nation against nation, um, people fighting, uh, people uh, arguing, uh, lawlessness, rioting, fires, earthquakes, famines, hurricanes. You know, these are the Bible says the beginning of birth pains. It's going to get worse. May the Lord bless you. Uh, in the nombre de Jesucristo. Amen.